You know how they say Ladakh is breathtakingly beautiful? I didn't know it would literally take my breath away. I had seen it on a bullet, in a tempo traveler, on a wheelchair, and even in an ambulance. Hi, what's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. Welcome back to another video. Your girl is back safe, sound, alhamdulillah, back in the Sara Squad Studios. <sighs> Thank you for being so patient with me. This is the first time ever in two years that I've missed literally three, three uploads on YouTube back to back. Never have I ever done that and that was killing me from the inside but I really needed to take this break to recover. I did try to film this video one more time as soon as I came back but I felt like I was not being completely transparent. I was not saying everything that needed to be said and uh, things that actually y'all should be knowing about my story time of how my Ladakh trip which was supposed to be a nine day adventurous trip was quite adventurous because it took me right from the resort to the ICU in three days time. So this is a story time of what exactly happened in Ladakh. Everything that went down in the next three days, 72 hours that I was in the ICU. Before I dive into this video, I think certain things need to be made very clear. Number one being that I went to Ladakh completely healthy. I have never contracted COVID, neither did I get COVID after going there. That is not the reason that I was on oxygen cylinders. I have received both doses of my COVID shield right back in March itself because I'm a healthcare worker. I also did not have a pulmonary condition ever in my life and nor do I have it in my genetic line. Plus I lead a really healthy life like if you see my Hustle with Sar vlogs and videos you would know that I work out very regularly so I have a good enough stamina to do what I have to do on a daily life. My lungs were completely healthy before I went to Ladakh. Second thing I want to make super clear is my intention to make this video is not to gain sympathy. That is not what I'm looking for. If you're capable of feeling empathy, of putting yourself in my shoes and experiencing this journey with me, of experiencing what the next three days in Ladakh bought, then that would be great. But more than anything, I feel like this video is the much needed justification for my Sarah squad who's been there for me your messages, your love, your prayers reached there in Ladakh when I had no network whatsoever. It kept me going in the ICU. Y'all pulled me through and brought me back. That energy, that positive energy I could feel virtually through so many of your comments and your messages was everything to me and I feel like y'all deserve to know this. Also, if you're new here, you've never been here and you're simply here to know what exactly happened to this girl and maybe also this could be a learning lesson to not repeat the same mistakes that I did or that happened with me in Ladakh so that your trip to any other high altitude destination might be much more smoother because what happened with me was unfortunate but it is not uncommon. It happens quite a lot at high altitude and what happened was not purely altitude sickness. Now, I think with all of this kept in mind, we can dive straight into today's story time. Go grab your chai, coffee, whatever nashta you want because this is going to be one hell of a gripping story time. Let's get started. All right, then where do I begin? Okay, let's get started with the fact that my Ladakh trip was super spontaneous, okay? I honestly did not do any research. I know it was a high altitude place and I know that breathing difficulty hota hai, which is why I did not go with my family because they have, my mom has a cardiac condition, my dad is a smoker. It would be risky to travel with them, which is why I had decided to travel alone. And I thought going solo on this trip would be risky because you know, what do I know? So I decided to go with a travelers group and I found this page called Mad Ventures on Instagram. One of my friends actually recommended this to me and I was like, chalo jate. She had never traveled with them, but she found them on Instagram and I was like, you know what, let's go with this travelers group. I could make friends over here. I could travel with them. That is how I joined this group. I did ask the person in charge, that is Madhura, that in case of any health emergencies, are you all prepared? Do you have? How many times have you been to Ladakh? All of that research about the tour, I did. But I didn't research about the place. So she had traveled seven times before. She takes groups of 15 multiple times to Ladakh. So, so many people have traveled with her. As she told me, she had oxygen on board if it was needed. So I was like, okay, you know, thoda bot oxygen lagta if you have breathing difficulty. This girl is well set and she knows what she's doing. So I went ahead and booked myself with them. Now my gods were with me right from the beginning because I was going to make this trip solo with this group wherein I know no one. But last minute, my best friend Roshni decided to come as well. She also just wanted to 
गेट आउट वी वर जस्ट फ्रेश ग्रेजुएट सिर्फ पेंडेमिक की बात नहीं थी हम इतने साल से मेड स्कूल में पढ़ पढ़ के पक चुके थे एंड वी वॉन्टेड दैट पोस्ट ग्रेजुएशन वेकेशन एंड सो शी ऑल्सो डिसाइड वेरी इम्पल्सिवली टू कम विथ मी दैट मस्ट है मोस्ट स्पॉन्टेनियस डिसीजन ऑफ रॉस्टीज लाइफ एवर सो दैट हैपन एंड आफ्टर दैट यू ऑलमस्ट हैव सीन द ब्लॉग्स इफ यू हैवेंट आई विल लिंक द ब्लॉग्स फॉर यू ऑन टॉप सो यू कैन मेक श्योर टू वॉच इट टू नो exactly what every day was like but just to give you a gist there was no acclimatization in our itinerary whatsoever like day one itself we took dimox which helps with altitude sickness so that tablet would just help us feel better and we started exploring the city within 2 hours of landing in leh there was no day to just simply rest and get used to the place in the itinerary everyone in my comment section on day one's vlog also told me the same thing that what is this why are you already exploring the city you are supposed to rest on the day one you're not supposed to do anything get Get used to the altitude, so that did not happen in the first place itself. But the next day was much simpler. I don't think anybody was having any difficulty. We were all fine. We explored the city much in depth. But the third day was the real catch because that day was super, super hectic and, to be very honest, super risky as well. When I told this itinerary to one of my friends who does a lot of traveling, he was like, "This third day was like a planned murder because." it was intense okay if you've seen the third day's vlog we start our trip right from lay city going all the way to khardungla which is one of the world's highest motorable roads it's 18000 feet so it's very high altitude when we were climbing up to khardungla only in our tempo traveler we all started feeling slightly breathless that is when we started smelling camphor to like ease out our breathing people who had motion sickness were already throwing up as well because ladakh roads are not forgiving in any sense and when we reached khardungla madhura told us that you should not be staying here more than 20 minutes so 20 minutes and we are back in the tempo traveler because then you get acclimatized to that very high altitude and then when you start descending that's when the trouble starts happening so we were exactly there for 20 minutes no more no less so at khardungla there was this snow capped mountain situation where everyone was going and taking photos and i tried to go there i took one step but i was so breathless Is that I was like, no, no, nothing doing. Our day is going to be super adventurous. So I came back down and I sat like at this uh, edge of the mountain and I was just enjoying the view. It was so beautiful, so peaceful. I sat alone and it was very calming and I was completely fine. We sat in the tempo traveler. We started descending down. So now on the same day, we are descending from Khardungla. We are going to cross Leh and go to Nubra Valley. So we've gone to one of the world's highest altitudes. And same day we are going Nietzsche, then the altitude we were already used to. So we have traveled a very vast altitude. This is where the major fuck up starts to happen because when we are descending, that is when I get a little more breathless. So we stop at this North Pulu check post in between. Like it was like twenty minutes down from Khardungla, and everybody wanted to refresh themselves, use the loo and chai, coffee, vagera. मुझे बिल्कुल energy नहीं लग रहा था कुछ भी करने के लिए. I remember there was this beautiful stream, and I wanted to take photos against it. And only because of that stream, I got out of the tempo traveler and slowly, slowly one one step. Like I somehow reached the stream. It was starting to get very cold as well. Like Khardungla, because there was a little bit of snow and all, it was thora thanda. So I had like layered up and stuff, and slowly, slowly at my pace, I went to the stream, took photos. There were four stairs to go down to the stream. So when I was coming up, I was really, really breathless, and Madhura noticed that, so she got the oximeter and checked my oxygen. But the oximeter would not read my oxygen because I had nail polish on. Now this is something you all pointed out so much in the vlog. That how can you not think of this? You're a healthcare professional. But let me tell you, in that minute where we are tired, we are getting fatigued and breathless, and oxygen is barely reaching my peripheries, let alone my brain to think. Even Roshni could not think of this because she's also a healthcare professional. मेरा नहीं तो उसका दिमाग चलना चाहिए था. But सभी लोगों की हालत like down होती जा रही थी. तो दिमाग नहीं चला कि nail polish की वजह से reading नहीं हो रहा है. And just because I was discomforted and breathless to take a like a precautionary measure madhura was like we'll connect you to oxygen irrespective so then in the tempo traveler we put oxygen for roughly around 30 i think 15 20 minutes and oh my god that changed everything like sara before oxygen and sara after oxygen were two different saras like i was not even willing to take the oxygen i was like no no i'm fine i'm fine i didn't want to spoil the trip you know i didn't want to make a scene but i'm so glad that she gave me the oxygen because that made me feel so much better for the day ahead after that there was river rafting and i did river rafting in full josh like i have taken the raft and been one of those people who was actually actually rafting not just sitting in the raft the hyperactive sara was back 
back and there's this activity that you can do during river rafting and that is body swimming or something basically you can jump in the water and now this is something i already knew through social media that you can jump in the water during river rafting and i had made up my mind that yes yes i will pakka do this because i've done river rafting before so when the rafter asked us who wants to jump in the water i was the first one i was like yes i want to go and without giving it a second thought i just jumped into the water ice cold water i'm telling you i have no regrets okay that felt amazing like that ice cold water on my body with the sun shining it felt like these are the moments we live for right so it was amazing and jayati jumped as well and then i forced roshni so roshni also jumped as well it was really really nice the whole experience was great we came back up we dried ourselves ate lunch this was around roughly 3:30 i won't say that me jumping in the water is the reason that i felt sick but it was definitely a contributing factor to something that will come later and i will tell you as we go but after that also our day did not end there was atv riding that we did after that there was also discit monastery just ke सीढ़ियां चलते चलते तो हम मतलब एकदम बैटरी डाउन हो गई थी उसमें भी देर सम एंड थू पीपल हु हैड दी एनर्जी टू गो टू अन अदर मॉनिस्ट्री बट देर वॉज अ ग्रुप ऑफ अर दैट जस्ट सैट रिलैक्स बिकॉज वी वर डन आफ्टर दैट देर वॉज ऑल्सो सैंड ड्यून एंड वी वॉक एट दैट ऑल्टीट्यूड इन सैंड सो बाय द टाइम वी रीच आर गेस्ट हाउस इन नूब्रा वैली एट अराउंड रफली नाइन थर्टी पी एम everyone was a dead tired okay we were all exhausted we all retired to our rooms i took a bath we ate dinner and i ended the vlog and that is where the actual drama started so i ended my third day's vlog at around 11:30 after eating dinner and when i was eating dinner itself my throat had started to hurt so because my throat was hurting i only ate warm foods and i kept it really light and i went to sleep and when i was sleeping i told roshni just check if i have fever so i was developing a little bit of temperature which i thought was simple. Simply out of exertion and exhaustion, you know, जब बहुत काम कर लो तभी ऐसा बुखार जैसा लगता है तो आई टोल्डो एक और एक्स्ट्रा ब्लैंकेट डाल दे उसमें सो जाते हैं नूब्रा वैली वॉज स्लाइटली कोल्डर देन ले सिटी सो देन आई स्लेप्ट विथ टू ब्लैंकेट सो आई स्लेप्ट अराउंड इलेवन थर्टी पी एम एंड एट अराउंड वन टू टू ए एम इन माई स्लीप I felt like somebody was sitting on my chest and talking to me. You know, I was feeling so suffocated in my sleep, and this is one of the symptoms of what happened to me—that you feel like you are being drowned. That is exactly how I was feeling. I was feeling like somebody is holding me against my will, and I'm like in my sleep. What am I supposed to do? मैं क्या करूँ? मैं क्या करूँ? क्या I can feel better? तो मतलब मैं you know नींद में अपने से कुछ तो कुछ तो हटा रही हूँ एंड वो एक कंबल था मैं हटाई फिर सोने की कोशिश कर रही हूँ एंड आई स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग कॉफ लाइक आफ्टर डिनर ओनी आई स्टार्ट डेवलपिंग कॉफ So because my throat was hurting, I was coughing a little bit. I took strepsils and Dolo, and I went to sleep. But this 2 a.m. discomfort that I felt, I suddenly got up. I threw my blankets. I coughed, and I was about to puke. So I ran to the bathroom, and I puked everything. Everything that I ate, right from lunch to dinner, everything came out of my system. Because the way I was coughing, it was not dry, superficial cough. It was like heaving cough. Like it was coming under. So I was retching everything out. and i would continue to cough and when i could not puke any further i started puking blood there was very evident like big blood clots present and that scared me so that time i was like roshni get up you wake madhura up and we don't even know which room she is because this is a new guest house so everyone just passed out so tired that nobody cared to know kaun se room mein kaun hai but somehow roshni found her room woke her up and also woke jayati which was another friend we made in the group she was from delhi so jayati also got up and she got me an apple and pandi because in case it was acidity which i thought it was acidity because maine 2 baje khana khaya tha aur fir sidhe raat ko 9 baje khana khaya tha to beech mein i didn't eat anything so maybe it was the acidity that made me throw up you know but after throwing up I I was feeling so weak and I was constantly coughing. Now, once all these girls came in, we checked my oxygen. My oxygen was at seventy. This was low, and that is the reason I was not able to breathe. So, my first instinct after seeing that seventy was like, Madhura, go get the oxygen cylinder. You know, bring the oxygen cylinder from the car. So, she made the oxygen cylinder come, and I was connected on oxygen. And mind you, I am completely drained. Like my decision making power is completely drained out of me. I've thrown up. I'm tired. We have not slept at all, and. I just didn't know what to think or what to do. Plus, I'm not in a power. This is not my city. I don't have anyone I know over here. So that was also very bothersome, where you are not in control of making any decisions or choices for yourself. So that was a very helpless feeling I was feeling, and all I could think of that I need to breathe better. So I took the oxygen. Jayati did suggest that we should take her to the hospital right now, but Madhura was like, "No hospitals are open. Only army hospital. That is for emergencies." 
and i mean this was an emergency you should have taken me to the hospital right now this time if you would have taken me to the hospital at 2 am when my oxygen saturation was at 70 the situation would have been handled much better but that was not done i was kept on oxygen for 30 minutes i told these people go back to sleep because sabko agle din jana tha and abhi tak main bhi aisa soch rahi hu ki mujhe bhi agle din jana hai in sab ke sath tour pe roshni kept me on oxygen for 30 minutes disconnected she went back to sleep after i got the oxygen i was feeling slightly better i also want to sleep so i was like how do i sleep because if i'm lying down i'm coughing like anything like i was sleeping like this i would keep my hand and i was sitting down because in sitting position i was not getting any cough and suddenly mera chamka ke bro you're having breathing difficulty you're coughing on lying down you need to prop yourself up so if a person has pulmonary condition or your lungs are compromised you have discomfort when you're breathing when you're in supine position so all the patients who have pulmonary lung problems we make sure that they are propped up and sleeping like this in the hospital and not like this so you're at an incline so you're able to breathe better this discomfort during breathing is called orthopnea which you have in lying down position so whatever extra blankets and pillows were there i took all of that and i propped myself up after propping up i could sleep for roughly two more hours and i got thoda sa rest and 5 baje wapas bahut khasi aane lagi and i felt like vomiting i went to the washroom and vomited a lot more and after puking everything when i looked up in the mirror my lips were blue my skin was white dried up like kisi ne jaan nikal di ho my eyes were pale my fingers were turning grayish blue my toes were tingling my oxygen was not reaching the peripheries of my body and in that minute i kid you not i saw death like i was so sure i am dying here like that mein na main maut dekh li thi i was so scared where oxygen is not reaching my peripheries i'm turning cyanotic i am not able to understand what is happening to me and for the life of me i cannot diagnose myself i was feeling super helpless and the one thing jo mujhe chamka is like doctor i need a doctor so i messaged anuj first thing which is my friend he's an md i've done the covid vaccination video with him and i listed out my entire day all my experience experiences all my symptoms and i was like what the hell is happening to me you have to tell me and i also messaged the same exact thing to another physician which is my family physician dr madhvi kelkar so both of these doctors have messaged at 5 am 5 baje se 7 baje maine kaise kaata hai even i don't know main khali baithi thi aise hi baithi thi and 7 am i get messages replies from both the doctors then both the doctors have said exactly the same thing both are like you have high altitude pulmonary edema you need hospitalization and continuous supply of oxygen when i saw that i was like bro this is the shit this is scary i need hospitalization roshni ut abhi ke abhi ut abhi ke abhi madhura ko utha abhi tak i was not waking anyone despite like seeing death in the mirror because i was like kisi ka trip nahi kharab karna hai aage ke din bhi unke paas hai aur unko bhi travel karna hai to everyone needs rest but when i saw that i was like you know you wake her right now so roshni woke up and she went and woke madhura i don't know what was taking so long i was only telling roshni ki usko bol jaldi kar like wo apna own sweet टाइम नहीं ले सकती है मुझे सांस लेने नहीं हो रहा है इन दिस मिनट आई गेट ऑक्सीमीटर फ्रॉम समवेयर एंड आई चेक द ऑक्सीजन सैचुरेशन एंड इट इज एट 60 यू गाइस 60 this is where my oxygen had reached if you know for a fact in covid if the oxygen saturations were dropping below 90 we were hospitalizing the patients i was at 60 i had reached my benchmark if right now i wouldn't have gotten help i would have most probably died in this place and i was so scared looking at that 60 मुझे ना रोना भी नहीं आ रहा था लाइक सिर्फ वन थॉट वॉज इन माई माइंड आई डोंट नो इफ आई हेल्ड रोशनी और मधुरा नाइक आई डोंट वॉन्ट डाइन लदाख आई डोंट वॉन्ट डाइन लदाख लाइक आई नॉट एबल टू ब्रीथ ऑल्सो नाइक आई डोंट वॉन्ट डाइन लदाख लाइक आई कैन नॉट डाई इन लदाख इन माई हेड आई वॉज लाइक हाउ इज दिस हैपनिंग टू मी यू नो लाइक वाई एम आई योर एट सम हाउ मधुरा गॉट अप एंड एवरीबडी लेफ्ट इंडिया नाइट सुट सो रोशनी मधुरा एंड आई वी वेंट टू द नियरेस्ट आर्मी हॉस्पिटल स्टैंड इन द ड्राइवर ऑफ द टेम्पो ट्रेवलर जोवर्स and we went like it was like 5 10 minutes away from the guest house and i remember we leaving from there also there was one of this uh, chicks in the group and she was like are don't worry even our oxygen will be that much we are not checking our oximeter i was like are you freaking kidding me right now like i did not have the energy to like back answer and argue with her but you're telling me that oh, 60 is normal like tumko I was so irritated in my head but I was like you know what I don't have the energy to deal with some numb nuts right now just take me to the freaking hospital so we went to the hospital we went to the emerge section and they immediately put me on oxygen supply and all the nursing assistants which are all army people because this was a army hospital were around me I was feeling more calm more in control 
I was like, okay, okay, now I've gotten the help that I need. So I told Madhura, okay, you go, you go and like, you know, continue with the tour group. Of course, Roshni had to stay with me because somebody had to stay with me. So that day they were exploring Nubra Valley, which Roshni and my both got missed. At the time when I got admitted to the emergency, there were no doctors present, only nursing assistants were there. But of course, they're trained to handle something like this because this happens very often in high altitude places. So they were like, we are giving you oxygen. And I was like, can you please put saline on me because I've thrown up so much. I want the electrolytes, but they... they don't do anything without the rmo of course they need the doctor on board to like you know give the suggestions for all of this so when the rmo on board came at around 12 12 30 that day he was late so he took my history and everything i told him everything and he was like look you cannot travel any further that is for sure because next destination we were supposed to go to pangong and then kargil and shrinagar and our itinerary was jam packed so he was like iske baad if you go to pangong there is no guarantee that you will reach mumbai also alive so if you actually go back to mumbai now you can come back and visit pangong and when he said that i was i was like bas mujhe nahi jana mujhe kahin nahi jana i just want to get all dry right. i want to go back home i want to go back to bombay of course i felt sad but in that minute there were no emotions coming into me it was just practical thoughts all together i want to get all dry right. you know i had a very strong fight or flight instinct that survival instinct in a person that was very strong in me at that time and all i wanted to do was survive and i did not want to die so he told that we will keep you for 4 hours on oxygen i told him please put saline on me because i've thrown up and everything give me like an anti emetic so they gave me that now those are not symptoms of high altitude pulmonary edema that was honestly just acidity that was happening to uske liye jo dawai deni thi wo bhi maine mang li to they gave me all of that through the iv now these people at the hospital had not diagnosed me as high altitude pulmonary edema which is hapo abhi tak they were just treating it as altitude sickness so they gave me oxygen for four hours the plan of action was that post oxygen we will check the saturation if it's better you can discharge you can go back to bombay but if it's not better then we might have to admit you so after four hours my oxygen did not improve by a single point it was at 60 if you would remove it would directly drop to 60 and with external support at very high concentrations my oxygen was being able to maintain at 95 or something my blood pressure was also very high when i was admitted so with all of that in mind we did a chest x ray four hours later when we did the chest x ray it was diagnosed it was there and then very very clear my lungs were fucked for real and my right lung had so much edema present this is reversible damage but it is very evident damage it's going to take me a while to recover and seeing that i was like bro forget pangong mai mumbai ja ke bhi theek hone nahi wali hu like ye x ray dekh ke mai samajh gayi thi and after that they admitted me to the acute ward continued the oxygen support we did an ecg and we ran blood test when we ran blood test my tlc count was also high that means there was slight amount of infection also present so i had developed mild pneumonia as well i remember when i said the river thing was not a cause for the altitude pulmonary edema that i developed but it was a cause for this mild infection that i developed in my lungs so my lungs were very compromised at that point they gave me antibiotics and pneumonia was not a big issue past din ke antibiotics mein mera bukhar aur wo sab to chala hi gaya tha now this army hospital is completely indian army there are only male members there are no female attendants whatsoever but they were all so kind to me so 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 kind they all treated me like their family you guys my respect and love for indian army has Has grown ten thousand fold because they were so kind. Not only in the healthcare department, which was anyways their responsibility, but also being very protective of me. Like they were treating me like you know, just like me, कोई काज की doll हो के हाथ लगाऊंगी तो टूट जाएगी. इतना protectively, इतना अच्छे से मुझे treat कर रहे थे. Additionally, they were also giving me Wi-Fi hotspot from their phone so that I could connect to my family because both Roshni and I had Vodafone SIM cards, and Vodafone is zilch in Ladakh. Like there is no, no not even one bar of net. वर्क वे कहीं पे लेके जाओगे जैसे तुम ले में लैंड होते हो वोडाफोन इज जिल्च so you can take an airtel postpaid or a bsnl and go to ladakh that is the one tip i'll give you because god forbid anything happens max you have to do is contact back to home jo hum kar hi nahi pa rahe the and you can just imagine the halat of my parents over here like my dad ne to boria bistar ban ke he was ready to come over there and i was like no bro you cannot come here because firstly i am not even in lake ke tum jahan land hoge main tumko udhar hi milungi you will have to travel to nubra valley and on the first day you'll travel to nubra valley you're a smoker my mom's a cardiac patient both of them would have not survived so roshni was the queen over here she was not just handling me she was handling my parents everyone back at home 
she did such a good job of staying sane and that girl has done so much for me like she is the reason i'm alive here today you guys i'm indebted to her for life i'm so grateful that god sent her with me she was like my angel on the trip who was needed because if i had made this solo trip you cannot even imagine what would have happened so at around 7 pm or something the doctor came in and he also said the same thing that you cannot travel any further so that is to anyways out of the picture but also for bombay he's like i cannot discharge you tonight like we were really hoping ki aaj raat ko discharge mil jaye kabhi to discharge mil jaye like they are not giving me hope ki kabhi discharge milega so he was like what has happened to you takes at least 3 to 5 days of hospitalization and oxygen therapy and i was like 3 se 5 din to nahi bro i cannot stay here for 3 to 5 days and i was like no not 3 to 5 days you know what is the earliest you can do for me so he's like we will observe for 24 to 48 hours if it gets any better then we can discharge so every hour was counting over here and when i tell you time does not pass in the hospital and then he made the call to transfer me to the icu because i was consuming a lot of oxygen the cylinders in the ward were not sufficing for me so they shifted me to the icu for jumbo cylinders and then puri raat maine icu mein kaati roshni mere sath thi abhi agle din these people are all going to pangong and i really wanted roshni to go to pangong mera trip to वैसे भी बिगड़ रहा था आई रियली वॉन्टेड हॉट टू सी इट बिकॉज it's one of the most beautiful places it's the reason i wanted to go to ladakh was to see pangong and i was like mai kal ko wapas aa jaungi you have to see you know you have also paid money you deserve to go to pangong i did not want to put her in this emotional dilemma so i was like you're going i will stay alone if that's what it takes because anyways mujhe aisa kuch problem nahi hai mai khana kha sakti hu khud se mask nikal ke i can stay all by myself i will handle it i convinced myself and roshni on 27th ki 28th ko mai akeli rehne wali hu but 27th ki raat ko the Nursing assistants tell us that this is not possible. This is an army hospital. A female is not admitted over here alone. You need another female attendant with you. Now, what do we do? So, 27th ki raat ko ek baar ye pata chala to Roshni went back to the guest house to speak to Madhura, see if any female can be arranged. And when Roshni would go, Jayati would come back and stay here with me. Somehow, humne puri raat kartli ICU mein. Next day morning, Roshni went back to the guest house to you know freshen up and start her day because I wanted her to leave for Pangong. So before Roshni would go to the guest house, Jayati came uh, to switch. positions with her and jayati told roshni that no female has been found no contacts are able to find anybody to stay here with me so the decision has been made by the group and madhura that roshni is going to stay back here with me and they are all going to go to pangong and when that happened roshni started crying of course bro usko ye emotional dilemma mein dalne nahi tha she had to choose between her best friend's health and going to a place she actually came here for you know rota hua dekh ke i felt very bad because this she did not deserve this she did not deserve being put in this emotional dilemma i was feeling guilty that all of this is happening because of me abhi tak main shant thi maine kisi ko kuch nahi bola tha i was talking less i was saving my energy saving my oxygen but i got pissed in that minute i'll tell you why because one night before also when we were in the hospital and not able to make any communication no sim cards on us when we were trying to contact madura every now and then there was no network she could not answer she could not do anything for us matlab there was no connect with her at all like everybody back at home is only asking me one thing ki what is your tour operator doing for you what is the tour operator's decision because that is the obvious thing right she is supposed to make some arrangement for me to go back to bombay or just make some arrangement and take some responsibility to make things all right she comes back at 8 pm on 27th august when i'm still not in the icu and has made arrangements to airlift me out of this hospital and go back to lay city my mind in that minute looking at her i was like why do i have to be airlifted i don't have a heart attack i don't have a cerebral edema i don't have to go right now matlab i need the oxygen this is unreasonable aur kya airlift ka 7 8 lakh rupya hota hai bro ke paise hawa mein aa rahe mujhe dalni nahi hai yaar meri jaan important hai yes but itna paisa hai hi nahi mere paas ki main apne aap ko yahan se airlift karu aur kyu karu aur tune ye arrangement kyu kiya you should have arranged for a car to take me from nubra valley to le and that is what i needed and a female attendant is what i needed because i want roshni to go on the trip those arrangements which were basic were not being done that happened at night and once madhura went back to the guest house to make arrangement for the car she called me and told me it will be 6000 to go from nubra valley to lay for the car and it was just obvious that i am paying for the 6000s extra transport i was like okay fair enough how much refund are you giving me from the trip because it was a 9 day trip i paid 25000 i've only spent 3 days in the trip so whatever little bit you can refund back to me so i know that i can make my further on financial calculations because 
इधर ए टी एम वगैरह भी नहीं इतना कैश नहीं है मेरे पास इतना पैसा मेरे पास है नहीं एक्सेस में तो आई हैव टू मेक माई फॉर द कैलकुलेशन फ्रॉम नाउ ऑन सो ऑल शी वॉज राइट टू गिव मी बैक दैट नाइट ऑन ट्वेंटी सेवंथ ऑगस्ट वॉज फोर थाउजेंड रुपीज दट मीन्स यूर टेलिंग मी मैंने तीन दिन में जितना खाया जितना रही वो ट्वेंटी वन थाउजेंड का वर्थ था नाउ लेट मी टेल यू वी नॉट सिंग इन सम फाइव स्टार्स फैंसी होटल देव गेस्ट हाउसेज देव बेसिक एंड वेन वी वुड गो आउट टू ईट ऑल्सो इट वॉज नॉट दट द बिल्स वो ऑलरेडी पेड और दीज वो टाइड आप रेस्टोरेंट वाई यू पे मनी बिफोर एंड कीप लाइक आउ दीज टूर्स एंड एजेंसीज हैव शी वॉज पेंग आफ्टर वी वुड फिनिश ईटिंग लाइक शी वुड पे द बिल सो अब तो मैं नहीं खाना खा रही ना जितना भी तुमको टेम्पो ट्रेवलर वगैरह का मेरे डिविशन कॉस्ट में से है लाइक रहने वहने का वो निकाल के एटलीस्ट आई वॉज एक्सपेक्टिंग वो मुझे दस पंद्रह हजार रुपया वापस देगी तो मैं आगे का ट्रिप निकाल सकती हूँ मेरे हाथ में पैसा आ जाएगा एंड हर रिस्पॉन्स ऑन दिस वॉज लाइक एटलीस्ट आई एम गिविंग इट बैक टू यू अदर टूर ऑपरेटर्स वुड नॉट इवन गिव यू मनी बैक एंड द मैक्स आई कैन स्ट्रेच इज अ लिटल बट बट इट विल नॉट बी मोर देन फोर थाउजेंड आई वॉज लाइक ओके अभी मैं कहा कहा इस पोजिशन में उससे आर्ग्यू कर एंड वेन शेड कम टू मीट मी शेड ऑल्सो सेट दी टू मोरो विल बी गॉन्ग टू पैंगोंग वन सी गो टू पैंगोंग तो जितने लोग सिम कार्ड चल रहे वो भी नहीं चलेंगे यू विल नॉट बी एबल टू कॉन्टेक्ट अस एट ऑल सो शी इज ओनली टेलिंग मी व्हाट इज गोइंग टू हैपन फ्रॉम हर एंड दैट आई विल नॉट बी एबल टू कनेक्ट विद हर सो व्हेन रोशनी स्टार्टेड क्राइंग ऑन 28th इन द मॉर्निंग दैट शी डजंट गेट टू गो टू पैंगोंग मेरा पारा चढ़ गया बिकॉज़ आई वाज लाइक ये बंदी क्या कर रही है मेरे लिए कुछ नहीं कर पा रही है मुझे रिफंड नहीं दे रही है मेरा अरेंजमेंट नहीं कर रही है शी इज नॉट इवन वेटिंग फॉर द डॉक्टर टू कम एंड गिव अ वर्डिक्ट बिकॉज़ डॉक्टर सपोज टू कम एट 9am एंड यू आर टेलिंग मी 8:30 वी आर ऑल लीविंग टू पैंगोंग एंड वी विल नॉट बी इन योर शॉर्ट ऑफ नेटवर्क फॉर you so if i have to get out of this hospital how do i freaking do it i don't have a sim card i don't have contacts tab jab mai ko gussa aaya na i'm connected to the oxygen meter my bp was rising i called this chick and i was like listen listen very carefully i am your responsibility what has happened to me is not your fault but you're supposed to handle it what could have happened to my body is nobody's fault but i am your responsibility you're supposed to take an action if anything happens to me and i die over here in ladakh it is on you my parents will sue you back in bombay and i threatened her and i was like you have to take responsibility come to the hospital wait you will not leave Till my doctor comes at 9 a.m. आधा एक घंटा लेट निकलोगे तो तुम्हारी जान नहीं जाएगी मेरी जान जाएगी तो तुम आओ इधर एक घंटा रुको डॉक्टर क्या बोलता है वो देखो और उस हिसाब से मेरे लिए पहले डिसीजन लो और फिर तुम अपने ट्रिप पे निकलो तो अभी तक तो मैं कुछ नहीं बोल रही थी ऑफकोर्स इतने गुस्से में देख के शी वॉज लाइक हाँ हाँ ठीक है मेरा बीपी उधर शूटअप हो रहा है ऑक्सीजन रिड्यूस हो रहा है बट आई वॉज लाइक रोशनी को मैं रोता हुआ नहीं देख सकती रोशनी पैंगोंग जाएगी मतलब जाएगी एंड ये बंदी को अभी रिस्पॉन्सिबिलिटी लेनी है तो देन मधुरा केम इन एंड अपेरेंटली द होल टूर ग्रुप हैज कम इन एंड आई डोंट नो मधुरा मेड अप ओन माइंड और व्हाट इट वाज बट शी डिसाइडेड दैट शी वुड स्टे बैक योर विथ मी सिंस नो फीमेल अटेंडेंट वॉज बींग मेड एंड नाउ वेन दैट हैपेंड everybody in the tour group got upset because she made that decision after reaching the hospital she did not inform anyone prior to it so the driver was then she was going to send everyone to pangong with the driver now when the tour group came to know this they of course needed someone to blame so they put all the blame conveniently on me all of these people mind you are older to us okay roshni and i are the youngest in that group we are 22 year olds all of these are like 26 plus 30 and all and one of the oldest woman in the group who was 37 has the audacity to come to me in the icu see me in that condition where i'm pale blue and on oxygen support in the icu and so now is me that i am being selfish for keeping madhura over here that they need madhura more than me and the full tour group is not ready to go to pangong without her I was like how can you say this like how are you even saying is something mat jao yaar mat jao idhar hi baitho aao jao mere sath mere aaju baaju baitho aur gappe ladao tum mat jao pangong tumko nahi jana hai to meko aage guilt trip kyu kar rahi ho like how inhuman can you be to actually think that way and say something to someone who's literally on life support ki you need madura more than me right now truth be told dude pangong ja rahe the lake tha क्या ही करती मधुरा आके तुमको बोलती ये है लेक जाओ फोटो लो मतलब तुम एक दिन नहीं निकाल सकते थे उसके बिना मैं मर रही हूं इधर उसके बिना आई नीडेड अ फीमेल अटेंडेंट एंड इट वाज नॉट इवन लाइक आई नीडेड मधुरा ओनली आई वाज रेडी टू स्टे विद एन अननोन फीमेल आल्सो हु वुडंट हैव डन एनीथिंग फॉर मी आई डिडंट आस्क फॉर मधुरा मधुरा मेड द डिसीजन टू स्टे हियर तो जाके उससे बात करो ना एंड अपेरेंटली इन द टेंपो ट्रैवल ऑन अदर सीन वाज ओनली हैपनिंग विद अमंगस्ट द एंटायर ग्रुप दैट वन ऑफ द चिक्स हैड कन्विंस्ड एवरीवन एल्स दैट आई एम यूजिंग माय इन्फ्लुएंसर कार्ड एंड गेनिंग सिंपैथी टू कीप मधुरा over here with me like i mean mujhe kya mil raha hai i can go on this trip and complete this trip with you for the love of christ if this girl would have brought me to the hospital at 2 am when my oxygen saturation was at 70 i would have completed the trip with y'all all the doctors told me all the nursing assistants told me kya raat ko hi aa gaye hote jab aapko thoda bimar lag raha tha to 4 5 
how is that fine and how can i not blame a part of this on you that you have to take responsibility for my health and okay guys i'll give you all a scenario ye mere dimag mein nahi aaya ye jayati later told me that even if you're using your influencer card what is wrong with that in that minute in an unknown city in a icu of an army hospital where i don't have network friends or family if i have to use all the resources and my possibility to get the help i need to stay alive I would use it if I had a billion freaking dollars I would use all the billion dollars to airlift myself out of there and go back home so you use what you have you use your resources it's your fight or flight instinct to stay alive and I was not using my influencer card I didn't even know what was happening in that and I don't know if I had posted a story on social media and that is what made Madhura tick ke ye bandi influencer hai kal ko jaake meri company ko share karegi to mujhe problem hoga if that is the reason she decided to stay with me or whatever was her instinct but not only did she stay with me she stayed back with me and told me that she would refund full 25000 back to me this person who till one raat before was not ready to give me 4000 back ab pura 25000 usko wapas dena hai i was so irritated and listening to that i was like listen don't be unreasonable be practical जितना भी अपना प्रॉफिट वॉफिट है और तीन दिन मैंने खाया पिया रहा है उसका तुम काटो और मुझे बाकी का पैसा वापस दो मुझे सिर्फ हिसाब रखना है आपने ऐसा नहीं कि मैं पैसे की भूखी हूँ है अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह से पैसा मेरे पास मुझे पैसे नहीं चाहिए और मुझे तुम्हारे पैसे तो बिल्कुल भी नहीं चाहिए बट थोड़ा बहुत राइट ना मुझे चाहिए बिकॉज मेरे पास ए नहीं है और मैं कैसे ही पैसे अपने हाथ में लाऊँ कि मुझे आगे का ट्रिप भी निकालना है वापस घर जाना है और एक और फ्लाइट बुक करनी है बिकॉज माई फ्लाइट वॉज गोइंग टू गो फ्रॉम श्रीनगर टू बॉम्बे बिकॉज आई लास्ट डेस्टिनेशन वॉज श्रीनगर I had to go now from Leh to Bombay. In that minute, I don't know what to say as well. When Roshni was leaving, she cried a lot. Like both of us cried a lot because I did not want my best friend to go. I didn't want to stay alone with her. I don't want to cry. Ugh. I didn't cry at all till Roshni was leaving because I did not want my best friend to go. This is not what I wanted to do. <laughs> okay, I'm so sorry for that. I did not want to cry in this video. But anyway, that day Roshni left on 28th of August, went to Pangong, and uh, I somehow spent the day with Madhura in the ICU. The time would not pass, you guys. Like in the ICU without Wi-Fi, without network. What to do? कुछ कर नहीं सकते किसी से बात नहीं कर सकते कुछ energy भी नहीं है बात करने के लिए. I would just be staring at the ICU monitor like this and. बस दुआ कर रही थी कि बढ़ जाए प्लीज बढ़ जाए थोड़ा सा सैचुरेशन बढ़ जाए बढ़ ही नहीं रहा था मैं बोल रही हूँ ना 36 सिक्स आवर्स तक माई ऑक्सीजन सैचुरेशन वॉज एट सिक्सटी सिक्सटी फाइव ओनली इट वॉज नॉट इवन रीचिंग सेवेंटी एंड एट्टी विदाउट द ऑक्सीजन सपोर्ट एंड आई वॉज फीलिंग सो डिसअपॉइंटेड एंड डिसहार्टेंड के I was scared, you guys. Internally, I was really scared, but I was not telling anyone. I was just shanti se sitting. Because if I get scared, then who will keep my attention? The stands in the driver of the tempo traveler was very kind, and he kept his SIM card with me. His SIM cards, which had network. So once I had a little bit of network on 28th, I could do some amount of work. I could contact my team back at home, make sure the video was uploaded, which was the haul video you all saw. I made sure that went up. I did a little bit of work. I know I was in the ICU and on oxygen support, but when time didn't beat right, then what did I do? And this is the time when your messages were key to me. Your comments and messages, I would just load them and I would get Wi-Fi. Or जब Wi-Fi नहीं था, मैं बैठ बैठ के सब के messages पढ़ रही थी. Every get well soon, every prayer, every love, everything that you all have sent, I could not reply back to everyone because मेरे पास Wi-Fi नहीं था. But I took it. I soaked all the love, and I was like, "This is why I have to get back home. I have to go back for my family, for my friends, for my Sara squad. I have to survive Ladakh and go back alive." Like that was my survival instinct, and you all were my ray of hope. Through social media, I also got a lot of contacts by putting that one story. It actually helped me in much more ways than you can imagine. So Anish Sheth, who's the owner of Doctor Sheth, reached out, and he was like, "I have a friend in Leh. I'll contact you to her." So then he gave me her number, and I was like, "Yes, I need female friends over here." So his friend Lagaud contacts. She knew. New people in Nubra Valley, and she was like, "An ambulance can be arranged for you." So through her contacts and through Madhura going to the district hospital at Biscuit, they arranged an ambulance for me. Now, ambulance is something which is SOS. You cannot book an ambulance. When you go there, you will get it. But there were formalities which had to be done for me to get the ambulance. But that arrangement was made by Madhura. She stayed and she took care of me on the 28th. I'm gonna give her that. That on 28th, once she took responsibility, she took full responsibility of my health and everything. Made sure that the ambulance is there. So one more thing, I was very grateful. 
grateful for was Anuj because he was continuously in contact with me and with the doctors at Leh who were treating me. So when my oxygen saturations were not increasing, he finally convinced the doctors to give me nifedipine because up to they had not given me any drugs apart from the antibiotics for the pneumonia. So on 28th night, they gave me that tablet and on 29th in the morning, I was still in the ICU when I finally woke up and removed the oxygen cylinder. The saturation was at 80 without any external support and that just made me breathe a sigh of relief. I was like, okay, there is hope. My lungs are bucking up. They're finally bucking up. So for 48 hours, jutna change nita wo finally 48 hour pe the saturation improved and the nursing assistants were like, yes, you can get discharged, but you have to be on oxygen supply continuously. So then we had that one portable cylinder which I had in the Tempo Traveler. So then wo portable cylinder leke we went to the Diskit District Hospital. Uh, over there, we had to get the ambulance because army hospital would not give us an ambulance. I think I missed up the dates a little bit over here because it was not the 29th that I got discharged. It was the 28th that I got discharged. So you can just shift everything one date back. So though then I was in the hospital, third day in the morning, I got discharged. I got into the ambulance and the flight that I was supposed to take to Bombay from Srinagar initially, according to my trip, I asked one of my friends, Raisa, to reschedule it for me. And she shifted me to a flight which was going out of Srinagar on the same airlines to a flight which will go out of Leh. So now she booked me on 29th in the morning, which was going from Leh to Bombay. And there were no flights without layovers. So this one had the least amount of layover for 40 minutes in Srinagar. That was it. So I was like, okay, this is the best one. We'll go for this. So this was 7 a.m. on 29th that I was initially supposed to fly out. When I sat in the ambulance and I was setting out for Leh, that time dad and Sabrina both messaged me saying, your flight has been cancelled. So... I mean, problems were not going to be done, but they were going When that happened, I was like, shit, now what do I do? So I immediately messaged Raisa, she checked and it was actually cancelled from Srinagar to Bombay. So late of Srinagar was going to be but Srinagar to Bombay was not going to be done. So Raisa spoke to the airlines and of course the airlines was ready to put me on any other flight free of course, because it was their fault. But all other flights that very day were having 9 to 10 hours layover and I was not in a position to make a 9 to 10 hour layover in Delhi and Srinagar and stuff. Where would I go and how would I breathe? Because at the airport, I would not have these oxygen cylinders. All of this is on rent. I can't just buy an oxygen cylinder and go to the airport with it. There are formalities that you're supposed to do for all of this. It takes 72 hours prior notice to the airport, to the airlines. You have to inform all of this that I'll be coming with one oxygen cylinder. And I had not done all that. And it was not just practical for me to do a layover. So Raisa told me the best option for me was to take the same flight which I had but on 30th instead of 29th and spend one more night in Leh. And when I told this to Madhura, her first response was like, we'll be gone to Kargil, Roshni, I, all of us will be traveling, then who will be there with you? And I was like, bro, I know this. You're not supposed to tell me what you are going to do. I know what you are going to do. That is the reason why I was also flying out on 29th. When y'all go to Kargil, I go to Bombay. But now that is not happening. So you give me a solution. You are supposed to be doing the problem solving. In that minute when she said that, na, I was like, you know what? Let's just go to Leh. Uske baad na, I will make the decisions. Because abhi tak na, I am feeling very powerless. I am very alone over here. I don't know anybody. But once I would have gone to Leh city, you remember that friend I made, Neo, on the second day? I had informed him about my complete situation when I was in the ICU. And he was like, you just come back. I will take care of everything. So I was like, I have him. I also have Diskit, which is Anisha's friend. And I was like, I have contacts in Leh, which I don't have in Nubra Valley. So I was like, char ghanta bas main nikal lo. Taking that ambulance, we went back to our guest house in Leh. That ambulance ride was also something altogether because it was a gypsy. So it was moving so much. And like I said, Ladakh roads are not forgiving. So it was quite a ride. And let me tell you, by that time, I had seen Ladakh from all ways possible. I had seen it on a bullet, in a tempo traveler, on a wheelchair, and even in an ambulance. And there was nothing else left to see only. Somehow, anyhow, we took like a continuous four-hour trip. I don't know, ek bhi jagar rukna when we reached the Lake guest house, she set me up and gave me oxygen cylinder and food and she went back to join the group. So the group was coming from Pangong back to this Lake guest house. So on the way, she met them somewhere. So when I was in the ambulance, I had given this a lot of thought and I had decided for myself that I will go out on 30th. I cannot fly out on 29th with the layover. So I will check myself into a hotel. So when I reached the guest house and once Madura was gone, I looked up the hotels and I knew there's this one hotel, the Druk. I had seen it before. I mean, we were in Tempo Traveler. And it looked 
really fancy and luxurious and I was like this is what I need right now a really really good hotel which will give me very good room service because I'm not in a capacity to get up and take anything for myself and I called the hotel and I let them know my complete situation and I told them what is wrong with me and I told them I just need two things from you you give me an oxygen cylinder I will of course pay for that and you give me very good room service like everything has to come to my room because I am not in a position to get up and that hotel was so kind to me so nice even the guest house people I'm not gonna lie they were very nice to me but I cannot expect them to give me room service because that is not something we are paying them for by evening I had sorted everything out Raisa put me on 30th flight out I booked a hotel for the 29th to stay and all my friends came back in the evening so Roshni came back and that just brought life back to me seeing Roshni made me so comfortable and everything was booked and Sahil came Jayati came these were two friends I made in the group so we were all chilling talking and it was just so nice to have them back and feeling comforted with my company and to pull me through the night we needed another oxygen cylinder so Madhura arranged for one more which was 1500 liters I was at least consuming 3 liters per minute of oxygen so 700 liters of cylinder was less than 1500 liters of oxygen we asked so that I can pull through the night that night I didn't sleep the whole night because continuously my oxygen change was closed it was closed it was a humidifier we didn't know how to work it finally on 29th I checked out of the guest house and I went to the Juk which is the hotel that I had checked myself into Madhura had arranged transport so Roshni and I went to the Juk which is very close by I took a hotel which is very close by from the guest house and the airport so that all the transport can be very easily made and at the Juk they were amazing I kid you not that manager Mr. Tashi if you are going to lay I highly recommend the Juk it was not even very expensive in 5000 I paid for breakfast dinner and my one night stay and it was amazing the treatment they gave me they treated me so well Mr. Tashi was so careful of me and he arranged the cylinders I needed he arranged a 2500 liter cylinder for the night and a 700 liter for the day I would literally have to call room service every two minutes because of the oxygen or the food or something and the breakfast and dinner which was included in my package was actually supposed to be buffet I had to go and get up and take my food but they made sure it comes to my room with a menu card and everything all the staff were very kind to me very nice with me and super careful of me without any extra incentive or money whatsoever they were doing all of this for me and it was super heartwarming to know that so many strangers came to my help when nobody was there for me right nobody I was alone over there Roshni of course checked me into the hotel made sure everything I had at my beck and call everything was around me on the bed also made sure the management at the hotel knows that I should not be disturbed and she properly properly set me up like a mother and she left color was coming back to my skin I was feeling better then in the afternoon Neo visited me I needed some cash so I told him please give me some cash I transferred money to him and he bought me an oximeter because I needed an oximeter on my airport and everything I did not have one and then in the night Discord came and visited me and she bought me fruits so she kept me company because the Wi-Fi was not working at the hotel so that was a little bit of a bummer because Barish Shwiti the Wi-Fi was not working so I couldn't do anything there I was videos edit videos in the hotel because what does it do? It's hard to occupy the mind when I saw in the mirror and there was color back to my skin I was feeling so good I could reduce my oxygen intake to 2 to 1 liter per minute so that was also improving and getting better the saturations were getting better I was feeling better I was pacing my work I finally took a bath after four days I want to tell you I took a bath and I ate different food because the hospital food was not good at all so I finally got different food it was refreshing it was good and next day morning the hotel arranged a transport for me to take me to the airport in the morning I went to lay airport a wheelchair was arranged over there because I did not have an oxygen cylinder to connect myself to so I could not do any walking I was a little scared that how will I survive without oxygen cylinder so far I, I have only made it with external support but Anush told me don't do anything don't talk to anyone don't walk at all just breathe and focus on your breathing because without oxygen support it was 80 so I could have somehow managed with 80 but there was a little discomfort not gonna lie at Lee airport but uh, I reached the flight we somehow took off and the minute I landed in Bombay my oxygen saturation was 98 Bombay ki hawa chahiye thi, you guys Bombay ki hawa is everything wo lagte ke saath mein thik ho gai thi like I was like Bombay mujhe wheelchair bhi nahi chahiye but they were already waiting for me Mumbai airport is super equipped like as soon as I exited my aircraft they were ready with the wheelchair so I was like ab aai gayo to leke hi jau to wheelchair pe leke and then mom and dad were there at the airport and I finally reached home 
सेफ साउंड हेल्दी अल्हम्दुलिल्लाह एंड दिस वाज अ स्टोरी टाइम ऑफ व्हाट हैपेंड विद मी इन लद्दाख नाउ यू नो व्हाई इट टुक मी सो लॉन्ग टू एक्चुअली सिट डाउन एंड टेल यू ऑल दिस बिकॉज माय रिकवरी टुक टाइम आई हैड टू गेट बैक इन दिस पोजीशन टू टेल यू व्हाट एग्जैक्टली हैपेंड आई एम नॉट हियर टू ब्लेम एनीवन आई नो दैट व्हाट हैपेंड टू माय बॉडी वाज नॉट एनीबॉडीज फॉल्ट नॉट माइन नॉट द टूर ग्रुप्स बट आई वांट टू एट लीस्ट एम्फसाइज दिस दैट अ लॉट कुड हैव बीन डन बेटर द आइटिनरी प्लानिंग कुड हैव बीन डन बेटर सबकी हालत टाइट थी मैं इतनी बीमार पड़ी जो मेरे साथ हुआ वो किसी और के साथ भी हो सकता था दैट शुड नॉट हैव बीन सो मच ऑन वन वन डे टू द पॉइंट दैट बाय द एंड एवरीवन वाज एग्जॉस्टेड व्हेन रोशनी रीच्ड बॉम्बे आल्सो शी वाज सो टायर्ड एंड शी वाज फीलिंग अनवेल एंड शी वाज लाइक अपनी 7:30 तक खत्म ही नहीं हो रही है लाइक दैट्स हाउ वी हैव बीन फीलिंग एवर सिंस वी आर बैक आल्सो द मेंटल फिजिकल ट्रॉमा ऑफ व्हाट हैपेंड वाज अ लॉट एंड नॉट ओनली वाज माय एक्सपीरियंस एज अ ट्रिप स्पॉइल्ड माय एक्सपीरियंस विद द कंपनी वाज आल्सो स्पॉइल्ड बिकॉज़ द वे आई वाज ट्रीटेड आई फेल्ट वेरी helpless over there and that should not have been done there could have been better decisions which is why i did not leave the link to mad ventures in any of the description boxes a lot of you all have been asking me kiske sath gaye the we also want to go we also want to plan something the only reason is because if i don't recommend something then i am not going to leave a link in the description box but agar koi cheez main tumko nahi de rahi hu then there's a reason for it because jo mere sath hua kisi aur ke sath agar hua kal ko koi aur group mein so i don't want to feel like you know i should have taken the name of the company and been a more responsible person this is something that my friend pointed out to me yesterday when i told her that i have recorded the story time but i have not taken the name of the company she was like see if you had a good experience you would have gone out of your way to promote the company and of course i would have this was not a sponsored trip and i would have still gone out of my way to promote it leave links i did talk about it and i did take the name when good was happening then why shouldn't i take the name when the bad experience happened as well so this was just something i want you all to learn that please even if you're going tour group ke bharose apni khud ki research karo mere jaise mat bano main wo unke bharose main chali gayi maine apni research nahi ki ki acclimatization should have been there in the itinerary i should have gone with a much more spaced out itinerary and best i should have gone alone honestly if i would have gone alone or with a friend खुद से प्लान करके हम काफी आराम से जाते हैं। द वन टिप आई हैव फॉर यू इन ले लद्दाख और एनी हाई ऑल्टीट्यूड प्लेस इज टेक इट इजी नो मैटर इफ यू गॉन फॉर टेन थाउजेंड टाइम्स बट एवरी सिंगल टाइम योर बॉडी इज गेटिंग अडेप्टेड टू द इंटायर ऑल्टीट्यूड ऑक्सीजन सैचुरेशन उधर की हवा बहुत पतली है इतना ईजी नहीं होता है ब्रीथ करने के लिए लाइक like, मुंबई जैसी जगह में एयर इट सेल्फ पुशेज इन टू द लंग्स बट समवेयर लाइक लद्दाख एयर प्रेशर इज ऑल्सो लेस सो इट डज नॉट गो इन टू योर लंग्स विलिंगली योर लंग्स हैव टू डू द वर्क सो दैट इज अ रीजन why take it easy pace it out and very important go with people you trust love with a sim card so that you are never in a position that i was and the most important thing of everything the most important lesson you get from this video is be a good human have humanity don't be like the people i was on the tour group with empathize with people understand when a person is unwell health is not something we have in our hands be a kind human if not anything else be generous because your karma will always come back to you i'm a strong believer of that and i'm a life example of that because my karma was good my karam has always been good i have never wished ill for someone i have never wished badly for someone or done badly for someone i got help in a place where no one could get help okay like i was in a city where in there was no network no friends no family no contacts but i could still manage to have people come help me out and these are the people because of which i'm alive today you saw what a big role every single stranger had to play with my health and everything just fell in place eventually I could have died you guys very potentially I could have died a lot of people told me that you're lucky that you survived and you came back alive because they know people who've died because of pulmonary edema at altitudes and this happens I have strongly to believe that my god supported me because my karma is good and this is my story time all complete we'll close the chapter on this book and never speak of the Ladakh adventures again inshallah one day we will go back do much better and see Pangong which is still one of my dream locations i hope you guys finally got the answers you all were looking for but until then i will see you in my next video for today's video the sara squad shout out goes to all of my sara squad you all are the reason i had a ray of hope i'm very grateful to you all as well and very indebted to you all i love you guys so 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 much and i will see you in my next video bye guys mwah